Sometimes crime does pay the ultimate price. Tonight we bring you tales from the gritty city. Brutal stories from the dirty, dark streets and alleys that are the underbelly of New York, as can only be told by the hobo. Here in the city, the noise is constant, ever-present. The traffic's the big one. Horns, air brakes, screeching tires, and the construction, the relentless pounding in the back of your head. Some people get used to it, sort of a white noise in the background, but like a drum, it beats in my skull. A never-ending rhythmic hammering. And the sirens. My God. Always the sirens. Like a howling specter, it haunts me. Reminding me of another time and place that I'm trying hard to forget. And that's why I come up here. Eight floors up in the middle of the night. Top of a building, sitting in the shadows of a bird coop. And the only thing I can hear are the pigeons in the dark. The building was owned by one Michael Tormescu, a good guy. He owed me a debt I'm sure he felt that he could never repay. As far as I was concerned, he'd paid it back in full. You see, whenever I want, I can come up here, eight floors above the maelstrom, and try to forget. There's even an umbrella and a lounge chair. You know, the kind that reclines? It's amazing what feels like luxury when you ain't got none. But tonight, something was wrong. Tomescu was minding his birds when I showed up. He seemed a little nervous and asked me if I didn't mind being somewhere else just for tonight. Sure, I told him. Then he thanked me. Maybe it was a slight waver in his voice or the heaviness in his eyes that kept him from looking directly into mine. But yeah, something was definitely wrong, and I wasn't about to miss it. So here I wait. Once the sun clocked out and the lights of the city began their night shift, I made my way up to the roof and melted into the darkness. A shadow amongst the shadows. My old master would have been proud. Damn it. Some things are just too hard to forget. It was late, close to midnight, when the door to the rooftop opened, and the lone stairwell light shot through the blackness like a locomotive coming out of a tunnel, shooting a path straight to the pigeon coop. By the sound of their squawking, they didn't like it. Thin, long shadows stretched along the beam, dancing in their beady little bird eyes as four men stepped out onto the roof. If you know what's good for you, Tomesco, you'll play ball. We don't want that bird of yours to set any records. In fact, we want it to fly real slow. There's money in it for you, pal. I suggest you cooperate, and we'll all come out of this with some change. The pigeons. It was all about the goddamn pigeons. Tomescu had a coop full of carrier pigeons. Turns out there's a whole group of people throughout the city that keep them. They run them in some sort of time trials or whatever from place to place, which sounds to me like a race. And if there's one thing you can always count on if you're having a race, someone's betting on it. I won't do it. I won't, I tell you. It's a timed route, Johnny. Nothing more. That's where you're wrong, Birdman. You see, we got a bet set up that your bird won't beat the last timed route. There's even a point spread on how close the bird gets to it. You'd be surprised at all the different things the mob bets on. And you know damn sure if they got money on it, they'll try to fix it. Everybody knows the odds are in your favor if you already know who's gonna win. That's crazy! No, 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 that's money. And we got a nice little chunk riding on it. I will not be a part of your stupid gambling. Well, <laughs> I'm really sorry to hear that. 
We thought you might feel that way, so we made alternate plans. Your partner, Stanley? That's right, Stanley. I get a feeling he'll be a little more cooperative. Stanley. Now there was a piece. Stanley Gorman helped Temescu look after the pigeons. Kind of a shifty guy. I don't know what Temescu saw in him. I think he was related. Met him a couple times. Wasn't impressed. Didn't seem to like me much. The feeling was mutual. I guarantee you he will not be a part of this either. <laughs> you just got it all wrong all over the place, don't you? Your partner brought us in. Set this whole thing up. So we know he'll play ball. Talking with you was just a courtesy. So you see, we don't even need you. That's not good. They're probably armed. I start planning my move when Temescu speaks up. I won't let you do this, Johnny. And I will stop Stanley as well. <laughs> well what do you think about that, Stanley? A figure stepped out of the doorway, the light behind him blackening his features as his shadow, like a premonition of doom, crawled across the face of Temescu. Stanley, I cannot believe you would do this to me. I need the money, Michael. I need it badly. I'm sorry. In the darkness, I couldn't see the gun till it exploded. The birds went to a frenzy as the blast echoed across the top of the building. Hot metal blew into Tormescu's chest, punching a pucker hole through his heart the size of a lemon. The muzzle fire lit up Stanley's face in a flash, and in that instant I could tell he wasn't sorry. But he will be. Oh, Stanley, you cold-hearted bastard right in the pump. Didn't think you had it in you. I'm sure Mr. Manetti will appreciate the extra effort you put into this. You'll, you'll tell the tank I helped? Sure, sure I will. Give me the gun. Yeah, now let's get off this roof. Don't worry about your friend, Stanley. We'll take care of him for you. And I'll take care of you, Stanley. The killers left the roof and started heading down the stairs leaving behind the bloody remains of Michael Termescu, sprawled out in the cold night air on the roof of his own building. Seems death just likes being around me. So be it. There was a secondary power box on the roof. I flipped the mains and plunged the killers into the pitch. The only light was a faint glow from the roof doorway. And then came the voice. Stanley! Who? Who's up there? I saw what you did, and you're going down for it, Stanley. All the way down. Oh my god. Hobo! Oh, Boys, we got ourselves a witness. Take care of it. By the time they reached the top of the stairs, the clouds had settled in nicely. Without the light, I'd taken away the only safety they had, their eyes. They have their guns. I have the darkness. Three of them came out the door and entered my world. Boss, I can't see a thing. You got a lighter, don't you? Uh, yeah, boss. All three of them ignited their lighters. If you've ever tried to do anything by the light of a lighter, you'll know that beyond about a foot, you can't see a damn thing but I could see them a mile away. Thanks for the targets, boys. Hey, I must be getting close to the pigeons. How do you know that? What, are you stupid? Can't you hear them? Those damn pigeons are getting louder. Two of them hung back. The third one had just rounded the side of the pigeon coop, and as he came around the back corner, like in a horror movie, my face instantly popped into the glow of his lighter. I did two things fast. I grabbed his gun, and as his mouth began opening to yell, I swung my fist up, hitting him square into the chin, driving it straight into his upper jaw, crushing bone and flesh like a smashed grapefruit. One down. Bobby! Bobby! Answer me! Fuck! This guy's playing with us! Shut up! 
I don't know who you are, but you obviously have no fucking idea who you're messing with. The two of them were close to each other. Too close. Time for the distraction. They must have been nervous because they just stood there like statues with stupid looks on their faces. Suddenly there came a great whooshing sound in the air. Both turned and looked up just as the clouds parted for a second, revealing a shape, and they opened fire. They now had their backs to me. I silently sprung forward and grabbed the nearest guy, one arm around the neck, the other on his gun arm. I jerked him hard and slammed him down on the ground on his belly. Pinning him, I wrenched my body backwards and heard the snaps. I'm not sure if they came from his neck or his back or both, but he stopped moving. And since the other one was still firing, he didn't hear a damn thing. Two down. Everything was moving quickly now, and I wasn't waiting to see what happened next. Hold your fire, Connie! It's a fucking patio umbrella! Son of a bitch is playing with us. Let's get off this roof, Connie! Connie! Fuck! Connie! Right behind his ear, a voice said, He's dead. The killer named Johnny nearly jumped out of his skin. As he swung around, I grabbed his arm, flipped the gun in his hand, and trapped his finger in the trigger guard. You take a hold of a man's finger, you can lead him anywhere. I quickly pivoted and with a brutal wrenching jerk down, nearly ripped that finger off as he flipped through the air. He hit the ground hard and clutched his hand and began hollering and thrashing about. I tossed a gun away, walked over to him and kicked him hard in the side, knocking the air out of his lungs. That quieted him down. Three down. I picked him up by his lapels and slammed him against the outside wall of the stairwell. That's when I heard the voice behind me. Put him down, hobo. Unbelievable. So much for my old master's pride. I turned, cocked my head to the side, and saw Stanley, ten feet away near the edge of the roof, with the gun I tossed away. Oh, this just gets better. Stanley stood there, pointing the gun at my back, and the pigeons started screaming again. Stanley, shoot him! Shoot him! He could barely hear his voice over the torrent of the birds. It's like they knew, and it was driving Stanley crazy. Guilt can be a motherfucker. Shut up! Why won't they shut up? But they didn't listen. They just got louder. That's when Stanley broke and shrieked to the world, Shut up! Now, I whirled around and threw Johnny. He slammed into Stanley. The gun erupted. The bullet whizzed by my ear, spitting a red mist in my face. For a second, I thought it was mine. Nope. The splatter blew out of Johnny's back like an angry volcano. I then shot forward as that double-crossing shit Stanley stood there, next to the edge, tangled up with a dying mobster. He spotted me coming. In that split second, he knew exactly what was going to happen. But he was out of time and couldn't do a damn thing. I sped towards them, planted my foot, brought my knee up, and threw out a sidekick that slammed into the back of that low-life Johnny like a battering ram. I could feel the cracks inside his body as the impact launched them both through the air, clipping the roof edge, flipping them wildly out into nothingness. For a moment, I heard Stanley scream in chorus with the pigeons, and then it faded just as quickly. Four down. Soon the sirens will be here. All I wanted was a little peace and quiet. But sometimes you need the noise to drown out the chaos. A cacophony of pigeons to silence the world.